You were the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. There was criticism at that time as well. Uh, what do you think, Shinseki, the current Secretary, should he go? I've known General Shinseki a long time. I know his wife. They're wonderful people, great Americans. They've served almost all their adult life serving our country. I think it's premature to make that decision. There's a lot of investigating that needs to go on. Uh, what concerns me the most are the veterans. I mean, just talking about this veteran Valdez, we need to focus right now on the veterans because if this has been going on, it means that some of these hospital centers are so crowded that they haven't been able to comply with their own standards. So we need to um, conduct some kind of an emergency action here. And I, I think the President of the United States has a discretion, certainly the responsibility, to move on this and say, if you're not seeing these people and can't get them in within 12 days, send them to an outside health care provider. What's delaying that? Because I've heard that now from several people, that the, the option is there to outsource them, if you will, send them to another local hospital, not a VA facility, if they need critical care. I have no idea why they're not doing Did that. Did you do that I, I, when you were Secretary absolutely. of Veterans Affairs? That, that, that was a mandate. And I think one of the reasons that they don't do it, there's sort of a perverse uh, incentive at these medical centers that if they do that, it comes out of their budget and they all get compared to each other. Well, that sounds and like a ridiculous bureaucratic uh, reason. I when think you're dealing with the lives of veterans, especially uh, people who have served their country heroically. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is, we're sitting here at Memorial Day weekend, and we ought to have this whole thing focused right now on the veterans. The, the blame game, the responsibility, the politics, they'll play out, as they always do. But we ought to have a laser focus right now on taking care of veterans that are still out there, that are, that are not getting these appointments. How much pressure, Ryan, is the president under right now to force General Shinseki, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, to step down? I think he's under a little bit more now because there's some Democrats that are involved uh, now in calling for Shinseki to resign, and obviously midterm politics is, is getting involved here. Democrats in tough races are making this an issue. Um, I think he's, he's dealing with this quite similarly to how he dealt with HHS and uh, Secretary Sebelius. He decided not to, uh, not to fire her to, because the idea that there was you don't want to um, sack the, the captain while the, while the boat's going down. You want them to be able to sort of fix it and, keep, and, and stay on the job until it's repaired. And then, you know, frankly, push them out. And well, let me ask Drew. Drew, no one uh, knows more about what's going on inside uh, than you do right now. You've been all over the story for months and months and months. And I know you've tried to interview uh, Secretary Shinseki on many occasions. He's rejected all your, your requests. Uh, do folks inside the VA who are worried deeply about what's going on, do they believe if he were gone tomorrow, it would change? I don't think so. Many believe that Shinseki was kind of caught in the dark on all this. It's this kind of mid-level bureaucracy that runs these VAs all across the country. They all know each other. They all promote each other. And it's that kind of entrenched bureaucracy that the folks on the inside see as being the problem. Uh, but to Mr. Nicholson's point, I just want to uh, um, add to that. You know, we tend to talk about this in a political crisis when out in the country, out where the vets are, this is a medical crisis. All this talk about Shinseki resigning or who's to blame really doesn't matter to them. They want to know who's going to get my appointment and when can I see a doctor. And right now, while this political crisis gets hashed out and the blame game gets hashed out, they're still waiting, Wolf. There was an article recently, I don't know if you saw it, Mr. Secretary, the National Journal wrote an article entitled, Who Really Broke Veterans Affairs? They go back through the history and they say this has been going on, these delays, these bureaucratic nightmares forever, if you will, including while you were the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. You must have been so frustrated yourself. Well, there, there are two different kinds of delays. There is a, there is a, a waiting list to get a disability rating. And, and that, there were waiting lists when you were there as well. Yeah, and, and actually when we, when we came in, it was about 270 days. We got it shaved to about 160 days. Uh, which which is still too long. But it's still too long. The, the standard's 125 days. But there is a, a real large number of veterans that are queuing up for disability rating. Secretary and I'll say that uh, in my own defense, and I'll say that in defense of the current administration. There are more and more veterans showing up there. But what the current problem is not for a disability rating, it's for medical care. Secretary, you're being very diplomatic. I remember when you resigned in 2007, then Senator Barack Obama, he put out a very harsh statement. He said that Secretary Nicholson left the VA worse off than when he started, 
and it was one of the most tumultuous periods in VA history. Um, what did you make of that statement? Was he, was he being fair to you? He was on the then? Veterans Affairs Committee when he was a senator. He was on the committee, but he never showed up. Uh, that was a, a political statement, and I, you know, expected somebody that was running for president would take a shot like that. And he, he, was, he would never come to the committee meeting, so he really had no basis to know what was going on. We did not have uh, this, this current problem. In fact, we instituted and bought uh, uh, an electronic scheduling system. I think we called it Project Hero. And it was to facilitate uh, these appointments when a veteran would call in. And we were integrating it into the system. There are 153 hospitals spread around the, this country, and there's even a huge clinic in the Philippines in Manila. And it was going relatively well, but it, it had some hiccups in it. And when we handed off the you know, transition, thinking we were going to be giving it, these books to, uh, is it to Romney, we gave them instead to Obama. And it said, this, this electronic scheduling system still has some wrinkles that need to be wired is, is out. Is it fair to what say they that did, neither administration has been able to fix this system? The Bush administration, Let's let me finish the, the point. They, they took this whole system that we had, and for some reason, they set it aside and went back to the old uh, local laptop, computer, so is that and paper So Secretary system. Shinseki's uh, mistake, you think? Well, I, I, I don't know why they ever did that, because we, we had spent about $120 million on it, and it was really it was starting to, to work. But you, 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 when you resigned, rem remind our viewers why you resigned, because there was a lot of criticism. There was pressure on you as well. Well, there's no pressure on me to resign. I, I had no pressure. We, the, Big, the big flap we had uh, on my watch was we had somebody that took home a laptop and a hard drive that had the names of millions of veterans and his house got broken into and somebody stole it. But as soon as I found out about that and President Bush found out about that, we took decisive action that day, held a press conference, told every veteran in the world that this had happened, then hired companies to consult him. What's happening now is that the, the President of the United States is not, not taking the responsibility for this. And what I think the root problem is with these hospital directors is, and I, is that we've seen this kind of dishonesty and duplicity on the part of the President. If you like your plan, you can keep it. Well, you like your doctor. <laughs> story. But you he was not, I mean. So, so when, they get, when they get jammed out there, uh, and they're all compared to each other, some of them, it appears, have succumbed uh, you know, to a weakness to, to create some kind of an offline system instead of being honest and transparent about it and saying, I need help out here. I need reinforcements. I'm not getting these But if, but if these there are points. people at the Department of Veterans Affairs who are lying and cheating and giving out false reports, uh, you, you can't blame the President of the United States if there are some bad apples inside the system. Well, I don't know. They, but people look up to, to those above them, and if they see that happening and, they, and they're tested... Do they see Shinseki doing that? Oh, no, I don't, I don't, well, I don't, the I don't think he knew anything Affairs. about it. But he's the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Well, he, he's responsible, but the, the ultimate person responsible for this, I think, is the, is the Commander-in-Chief. So and he is the guy that ought to now be taking that kind of decisive action to see that we take care of these veterans out there who still, there, there may be more of these Valdezas out there, because if they were jammed then and can't make the appointments in 12 days, right, well, very, they can't now. Let me let Drew uh, get into this conversation. Drew, you have, you have a question for the secretary? Well, I'm, 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 still, I'm still hearing the, you know, the political crisis instead of the real crisis, but I wanted to ask Mr. Nicholson this question. It seems to me that for a long time, no matter who was in power, we've had a lot of trouble bureau bureaucratically running the VA. When you were in, in that position, did anybody step back and say, why are we doing this? Why don't we let these vets use their vet card as more or less an insurance card and go out into the public sector and get the health care that we need? Why are we running a separate medical system just for veterans? Well, that question does come up. And, and that's, that's a fair question, I think. But, you know, we have a sacred trust with veterans in this country. It really started with Abraham Lincoln, who said we have to take care of him who who fell and his widow and his orphan. And so we've created this absolutely fabulous system. I mean, there's no country in the world that takes care of veterans like the United States. But it's, it's very big. We have 21 million veterans in our country. And uh, we used to see about a million of them every week. And they are now seeing more, uh, according to the statistics that I read. So it's, it's, it's a very big, spread out system. And you have people out there remotely right. in those hospitals, and they have to act responsibly, and they have to act with integrity. And 